likely already know, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, is a federal law designed to protect and safeguard both digital and printed patient health information. There are two main components of the Act, the Privacy Rule and the Security Rule. This course focuses on the authorizations portion of the Privacy Rule, providing an in-depth summary that will suffice for the average employee. It needs to be noted, however, that this course doesn't cover the entire rule. In fact, the Privacy Rule is a lengthy read, nearly 420 pages in all. For most people, reading the entire rule isn't necessary for their work. It's also unnecessary according to HIPAA training requirements. HIPAA requires that employees receive training relevant to their job responsibilities. So, for most of you, this training will teach you everything you need to know. However, if you're a manager or in charge of ensuring compliance, you might want to download and read the whole rule. If you have questions about your organization's legal compliance, I recommend seeking out a legal representative who specializes in HIPAA. Authorization refers to the individual giving a covered entity or business associate permission to use or disclose PHI. Any authorization forms must be very specific, including the exact information to be released and the allowable uses for the information. If you're using or drafting an authorization form, make sure you have a legal representative check it out. It's got to be in plain language and it must include an expiration date. Remember, when in doubt, get an authorization form signed. It's as simple as that. You'd need a form to disclose the results of a pre-employment lab test to a potential employer. And you'd need a disclosure form to submit any lab work to a life insurance company. Authorization forms protect covered entities from HIPAA-related complaints. And as you've already learned, HIPAA complaints can result in hefty fines. So make sure your organization is fully protected with legally vetted authorization forms. Now, when it comes to authorizations, there are some special considerations. For example, if a person is deceased, he or she cannot give authorization. The finalized HIPAA rule actually protects individuals' health information for 50 years following their death. So, unless there is already a written authorization, you cannot share a patient's health information with a spouse, child, or other relative, even if the patient has died. And in the case of a minor, parents are considered the legal representatives in most states. This means they can access the protected health information of their children. However, if state law dictates otherwise, state law takes precedence. So, make sure you know your state's stance on this issue. In fact, if you're aware of any conflict between your state law and the federal law, seek the help of a legal representative to fully understand what takes precedence. Now, for just a moment, I need to discuss the specific needs of one medical subgroup, Psychotherapists, another covered entity under HIPAA, may run into some disclosure and authorization gray areas that need to be addressed. Just like a podiatrist or a gynecologist, psychotherapists, therapists, counselors, and psychiatrists are bound by the same disclosure rules. They cannot disclose a patient's PHI without authorization. There are, however, notable exceptions. A psychotherapist can share their notes without a patient's authorization for the following reasons. For internal training. In some legal proceedings, if proper documentation is obtained. To avert a serious or imminent threat to public safety. To comply with an investigation or audit by a health oversight agency. To assist in the activities of a coroner or medical examiner. Or, if required by law. The Privacy Rule also addresses patient authorization related to healthcare marketing. The rule identifies marketing as any activities that encourage or persuade people to use a product or service. According to HIPAA, a covered entity must have authorization to disclose PHI for marketing purposes or to disclose PHI to a marketing entity. The only exceptions include face-to-face -face marketing communications, such as when a representative from a covered entity is conducting sales meetings, and when the covered entity is distributing small promotional gifts as a marketing strategy. If you're an employee conducting marketing for a covered entity, consider taking the Marketing Frequently Asked Questions course for more detailed information. Beyond authorizations and marketing stipulations, the Privacy Rule addresses some of the organizational issues that might come up when integrating privacy protections. For example, many organizations or businesses might find that they have some business activities that require HIPAA compliance, and some that do not. In this case, an organization can elect to be a hybrid entity. If your business is a hybrid entity, which requires an application process, the HIPAA privacy rule requirements will only apply to the business activities that require HIPAA compliance. The other business functions will remain exempt. There are other specific organizational issues addressed by the privacy rule, including organized health care arrangements, covered entities with multiple covered functions, and group health plan disclosure agreements. 
If any of these stipulations apply to your organization, once again, I recommend seeking the help of a legal expert. The HIPAA privacy rule is a maze of rules and stipulations, and it's easy to become confused. For general employees, there are three important takeaways. First, individuals have the right to access their own health care. Don't stand in the way of this right, even if the individual is expressing frustration and anger. Sometimes individuals will take out their frustrations on the closest representative of an organization. Be calm and patient. Follow your organization's policies and get people their health information when they request it. Second, if you're unsure about disclosing health information, take a moment and check with the supervisor. Though this time may irritate the individual you've asked to wait, it's always worth your time to ensure that you are being HIPAA compliant. If someone asks you for an individual's health information, even if it's a friend or colleague, always say no unless your supervisor approves. Remember, it isn't just your employer or organization that can be held liable in the case of a breach. HIPAA compliance is your responsibility too. For example, in a recent case, a pharmacy employee accessed health information to help a friend determine if their spouse had an affair and needed a prescription for an STD. This employee was held personally liable for this data breach. Don't let this happen to you. And finally, make sure your access to health information is limited to the minimum necessary for you to conduct your work. If you have access to more than you need, talk to a supervisor. Your organization should limit their risk by further protecting the PHI. Once again, it's worth repeating that HIPAA-related questions will certainly come up. If you need the help of a legal representative, don't hesitate. Asking questions can protect you, your employer, and the individual's protected health information.